rewind it, Cheryl, from teaching two and three year olds. There are so many fun, hands on ways to introduce colors to your toddlers and preschoolers. And I'm often asked, well, how do you teach colors? And my basic answer is through exposure. I love having color activities throughout our classroom. So you will find it then maybe in dramatic play or at the light table, art table, sensory bin, Play-Doh, during circle time, in the songs we sing, the books we read. So I thought today I would just touch on some of our favorites to give you some ideas if you're looking for some ways to add more color to your classroom as well. So I'm gonna start with table activities. Now table activities are done during our free choice centers time. So while we have dramatic play and Play-Doh and sensory and all of that, we also have a table that we have table activities on. So these could be puzzles, these can be matching activities, these can be fine motor activities, and I try to always have some kind of a color recognition or color sorting activity in there as well. So here are some of my favorites. Now, first of all, it's easy to find color activities if you go on Amazon or if you go to a teacher store, the dollar store has them, and these are just simply matching cards. And another thing that I love to have are sorting containers. And you can get big chunky ones like these. My favorites are these little bowls here. Um, we actually have a lot of these and we make sure that each classroom in our preschool has its own set. And these are great for sorting. So you can find anything that matches the same colors and they can sort them into the bowls. Like for example, these are just little plastic animals that are the different colors that match the bowls. So we do love to have sorting bowls. We, I have sorting cups. Um, you can have sorting mats. Now this one here is from our St. Patrick's Day packet because it has some rainbow activities in there as well. And so I use these year round. So you could just use this simple printable here and find whatever little pieces you have so the children can just put them right on top. Or you can also use these strips that come with the printable that have the name on it and they can just match it up. They're also in Spanish, just so you know. So I'll drop a link to this in the video's description. Pegs, these are another favorite. We use these a lot because the children can sort and they can match the colors if they want to while they're also building. So you're getting some fine motor in here. I've even seen children count them. So you're getting counting in there. And then of course, probably my very, very favorite is using pom-poms. I love pom-poms. I have so many packets of pom-poms because we use them with art activities. We use them in our sensory bin. We use them, oh my gosh, we've had them at the block table, at the light table, but they are really good for sorting activities at the activity table. We also have this activity in that same St. Patrick's Day set. And so this is the rainbow. And then we have little pom-poms that can match. We usually do this during our St. Patrick's Day and rainbow theme. But again, this can be done year round. You can also use these during circle time when you make one for each child and they point to the colors as you say them. And of course, chenille stems. I love chenille stems. Now these can be at the Play-Doh table, these can be at the art table, but I like using these at our, with our table activities because you can find matching beads or you can find like matching buttons and they can just match them to the same color chenille stem and they can just thread it on there. Great fine motor. I also have a rainbow packet that I use year round and included in that are these little color cards here. So I will put these out on a tray and then I might put some big buttons out and they can set the buttons on top. So many ways that you can do this. And another thing I love, I love bug tongs. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I use bug tongs a lot, like every week. This particular set, it comes in the colors of the rainbow. So this is great for sorting. So you could use these with pom-poms or buttons or whatever, and they can then use the matching colored bug tong to the matching colored pom-pom to the matching color sorting bowl. So a lot going on here. So these are especially fun. 
Another great place to work on colors is at the art table. Construction paper comes in all colors. So often we might do a, um, like a color recognition art activity where they put the same color pieces onto the same color construction paper, but no matter what you do with it, they're still noticing the different colors that they're using. And when you use paint, they're looking at the colors of the paint brushes. I like to use color paint brushes and then I match them to the same color as the paint. So red brush will go in with the red paint, orange brush will go in with the orange paint. And if you have these paint pots, they come with different colored lids. So again, blue goes in the blue paint pot with the blue brush. If you are putting paint in containers, we're use the same sorting bowls that I just showed you as a table activity, but you can pour the matching colored paint into the bowls and then you can use the matching color brush. So they're looking at the colors as they're painting. As for materials, pom-poms again. Pom-poms are so much fun to use at the art table. We've done color tape. This is also fun at the writing table. Watercolors. We love using watercolor palettes. Do a dots, another fun activity that comes, they have the rainbow and this one is the brilliant ones. I know they've got pastels. You can find them in all different kinds of uh, shimmers and colors. And of course we have markers. So they're always looking at the different colors when they're using those writing table as well. And I even have this rainbow marker holder and I've put tape in the inside so they can really see and they can sort the markers at the writing table by color. So anytime you give them that opportunity to really notice the colors, being able to sort them, that helps them build their color recognition skills. The light table is another fun place to explore colors. We've had this little rainbow uh, piece that one of the teachers put together and they used, they used crepe paper and they just did strips of the crepe paper and then they laminated it. So this is fun to put on top of the light table where they can sort colors. Color sorting bowls, as I said earlier, we use these all over our classroom. We really use them a lot at the light table and it could be sorting something that's theme related like we might put out like red and yellow and green for apples in the fall. We love using color paddles at the light table but I will also put these in our science area. They might be on our window ledge so they can use these looking out the window and little color viewfinders. These are fun color bottles. Now I can, I need to make more of these. That's why I only have my blue one right now. I need to make a new set for the new school year, but I like to have one of these for each color of the rainbow. And these are so easy to make. I just use vase water bottles. Um, they have worked well for me, but you can use other water bottles as well. And I just, you can use liquid watercolors with water or you can use food coloring. And then I always just make sure to hot glue the lid closed. These are great at the light table. And these are also nice to put along the window ledge and at our science area. Again, pom-poms. Pom-poms we use at the light table a lot. And also any translucent blocks or materials. These come in different colors. These are fun at the light table. Magnet tiles. If I could choose a favorite toy, this would be it because this is used year round in different areas of classroom. We love using these on the light table. We love using these on our vertical magnetic board. We love putting these on trays at the activity table. We love using these on the floor. They're so much fun and all the different colors that the children are being exposed to while using them. And of course, Legos. Legos are another one where they love to use these for building in the block area, but they're also looking at the colors. Color blocks, same thing. Play-Doh is a great place 
to work on color recognition. When I make a new batch of Play-Doh, I usually make the Play-Doh so it kind of, it relates to the theme or the season. Blue might be for when we're doing the beach and ocean, for example. And again, this is where chenille stems can come in because they like to, I usually cut them and make them smaller and they might like to poke these into the Play-Doh. Colored popsicle sticks, I always make sure that we have these on hand because they love poking these into Play-Doh. Circle Time is another great place to work on color recognition. So if you have any of my props, some of them are different colors and that's so that you can work on color recognition skills while you're singing certain songs. In fact, we often will have CDs that have specific songs about colors in them. And of course, I have my Spotify playlist for each month or each season. And within each of these playlists, I try to grab some color songs too. And these color blocks are fun. I have these in different sizes, but I like to use these. You can roll them and then see what color it lands on. And then you can say, oh, who's wearing purple today? Or who's wearing yellow? Books, there are specific books on colors, or there might be some themed books that also involve colors. This one is specifically for yellow and red and pink. And then there's also a lot of books that share all of the colors. You can also use things like posters. These are fun to have somewhere in the classroom and there's different, you can do color banners. I have a colored pom-pom banner that sometimes I'll hang up. So all of these ideas are what I do in my toddler and preschool classroom to expose the children to colors and there's so much more than this. I mean, I didn't even bring out puzzles and games and things like that. This is really actually only touching on all the things that you can do to bring colors in, but I wanted to just give you some examples without overwhelming you. Please make sure to subscribe to Teaching Two and Three Year Olds on YouTube, click that bell icon so that every time I publish a new video, you'll be notified and I would love to hear how you add color to your classroom, so can you do me a favor and drop those ideas in the comment section? I'd love to see them. Thanks for watching.